YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Smell I'm back with another video playing your head top. Hey, currently, right now, I'm going to review a video of 15 examples of Japanese etiquette that will drive you crazy. So, one thing about Japan, there are a lot of, uh, I guess, etiquettes that are not written down, things that they do that you wouldn't necessarily know of unless you you've taken like an etiquette class or if you've lived here and just uh you've spoken to somebody somebody's told you or you know something of that nature or you just witnessed it so let's see how much of these i know how much of these are actually real because i don't know where the source is coming from but let's check it out real quick if you're new to the video uh new to the channel go ahead and like share and subscribe right side 15 examples of Japanese etiquette that will drive you crazy have you ever dreamt of visiting Japan seriously who hasn't it is famous for its high-speed trains colorful cherry blossoms and kimonos yummy sushi and incredible etiquette rules apparently there is a ceremony and a set of rules for even the most routine things in the land of the rising sun We've put together some mind-blowing rules of courtesy from Japan. Breaking them would seriously offend your Japanese friends or colleagues. From money envelopes to the degrees of... I don't think breaking them would offend anyone. Um, because they do understand that that is not your culture. So they will have, or they do have, a sense of understanding about that stuff. Make sure not to miss any of these. Number 15, addressing people. To address people by name is not enough in Japan. Our usual Miss and Mr. last names won't work either. And even the respectful title, San, is only the tip of the iceberg. There are actually more appropriate suffixes for addressing or referring to different people. Kun, a less formal honorific than the neutral. It's not Kun, it's Kun. How oh, does Iriata do? San. It approximately means friend. Chan, a diminutive suffix people mostly use for children, female family members, lovers, and close friends. Sama, the most respectful version, lord, honorable. It was used to refer to lords and deities. Nowadays, it's sometimes used to express sarcasm. We love this one because who doesn't love sarcasm? Cat with the sarcasm. Senpai is for addressing elder colleagues or schoolmates. Kohai is the opposite of senpai. Sensei, this one you probably know. It is used for addressing teachers, doctors, scientists, politicians, and other authority figures. She, for formal writing. Imagine mixing them up and referring to your Japanese boss with Sean. <laughs> drama, drama. Excuse me. Number 14. Exchanging business cards. When was the last time you gave someone a meishi? Oh, you have never ever. Okay, meishi is nothing bad or offensive. It is what a business card is called in Japanese. You just hand it out and say, it was a pleasure meeting you, right? Not in Japan. Exchanging business cards is a whole ritual. Here's what you need to do. Make sure your card's front side is facing your counterpart. Offer it with both hands. If your rank is lower than your partner's, hold the card lower than they do. If you were given a business card, put it on a card holder and take a few seconds to look at it. Don't forget to bow. If you haven't got a card holder, it's a disaster. It's a. It's not a disaster. Most of what um, he did say is true. So when you when you do have a business card, you do hold it with two hands, offer it with two hands, facing up towards the person. Um, yes, lower if you are lower status um, and bow. But when you when you receive someone's business card, take some time to actually look at it, study it for a little bit before you put it away. A cry from what we have. Just putting business cards in our pocket. Number 13, giving praise. Imagine you are working at or with a Japanese company. One of your colleagues has done something outstanding his or her ideas just helps the company make millions. Or maybe he or she worked day and night to finish that important project and meet the deadline. Would you say they did great in front of everyone else? Click like if so. 
Well, you could do that, but the person you describe as a bright mind and a very loyal professional would feel embarrassed. The Japanese believe that you can easily break a single arrow, but not ten in a bundle. In other words, group solidarity is much more important than individual success to them. So if you want to give praise to someone, say their team did a great job. I don't know about that one. A genius solution to balding scalp that you can do in your home. Genius solution to the lack is known to of boost ads. Number 12. Punctuality. Timekeeping means so much to the Japanese, they are surrounded by clocks. Every park, store, and even many of the billboards have clocks in them. When a trick... I'm going to go out on a limb, very small limb, and say that... Majority of every place in the world has clocks everywhere. One minute late, the railway company will make an announcement with their sincere apologies. The driver of a bullet high-speed train is not expected to stay more than 15 seconds off schedule. So don't be surprised if you have a meeting, a real or an online one, scheduled with your Japanese colleagues, and they start messaging you asking if everything is all right with you when you are one minute late. <laughs> So the punctuality thing is a big thing in Japan, especially for the railways and the trains. Um, yeah, it's huge. If they're late, they're going to start announcing it, announcing it, and they're going to put it on their websites and things of that nature. And they might even give you the, uh, the certificate of lateness for you to like bring to your job and things of that nature. Imagine what a torture it must be for a Japanese person in, let's say, Italy, where life is more relaxed and few minutes could mean a couple of hours. Number 11, in an elevator. It turns out that even here there are informal but clear rules. If you are the first to enter an empty elevator, you become the elevator captain and you should stand close to the control panel. You'll need to hold the door open until everyone has entered the elevator. Repeat, so for each floor at which the elevator stops. You must also be the last to leave and you need to do everything very quickly. If you are a tourist in Japan, try not to be the first to enter an elevator, unless you really want to be the captain. It's not that deep. Uh, a little bit semi to, to what he's saying, you know, it's that's that's more polite. So, yeah, somebody an, uh, enters it, ask them what floor, hit it, hold it. I mean, I do that wherever else, too. Position is not paid though, and you don't even get a cool captain's hat. And it's definitely not called elevator captain. Number 10, subways. On the subway, there are some restrictive rules that the Japanese are expected to follow. Talking is not allowed on the phone as well, and it's impolite to stare at others. It's not Cap. Customary to give up your seat for old people, even if they can barely stand. There are special seats marked with the sign for them, as well as for disabled people and pregnant women. You can't take those seats if you don't belong to those categories. So, on the train, you can talk on the train. You can do whatever on the train. However, the talking on the phone part is actually frowned upon, and obviously you're not going to be playing music out loud. Everybody's usually on a train playing games, or they have their headphones in, not disturbing anybody, but they are courteous about others um other space and and everything like that and the elderly slash handicap slash pregnancy seating is a thing on most carts towards the the back end there's a section on both sides where they will actually go and sit but you could talk on a train number nine touching in japan it's rude to look people in the eyes let alone touch them this country is not very large, so every Japanese person respects the personal space of others. If you visit Japan, don't touch people. Kissing in public will also give you quite a few angry looks. Before 1945, it even was considered a violation of public order. Cap with the kissing in public uh, giving you what? I don't, I don't even remember what he said. Um... So typically you don't really touch people. I know we 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 tend to do the handshaking thing in the states. Um, when you meet someone in Japan, you usually bow. But if it's like informal, your friend like you hug and, and things of that nature, it's fine. They're not 
big on PDA, the public display of affection. Um, some people, but uh, you'll see couples walking, holding hands, or if uh, the girl's with her boyfriend, she'll put her arm around his arm, things of that nature. So, uh, partial cap. Number eight, keeping it clean. The Japanese are obsessed with punctuality and cleanliness. Taxi drivers wear white gloves. Face masks protect people from germs. There are mouthwash fountains in public places to keep your breath fresh. There are moist towels at every restaurant to keep your hands clean without touching any taps. Oh, she body. In a Japanese home, prepare to take your shoes off before you enter. You will get slippers instead. Don't be surprised to get an extra pair of slippers to put on before you go to the bathroom. You will take them off again as you come back to your seat. And if you see a tatami, which is kind of like a mat, remember there are no slippers for it at all. Kind of like a mat. You can only it is a mat. Step on it with your socks or with bare feet. Rule of thumb in Japan. Uh, it ain't mean for positive pun about this. Um, always wear nice socks. You do take off your shoes in some places. If there is, if you walk into somewhere, walk into somewhere and there is a step up, an end step, you're supposed to take off your shoes before you step up. So don't step up with your shoes on. Um, you can turn around, take your shoes off, and then step up that way, put your shoes off to the side, line them up, or you can uh, turn around, sit down, and take your shoes off. Um, what? I forgot what else they said, but uh, yeah, most of that was true. Number seven, eating outside. There are lots of fun foods you will definitely want to try in Japan. From bento boxes, which can come in a super fancy design, to ramen and whatnot at the Yatai stalls. One thing to remember here is that you can't bring your own food or drinks to the stall, which makes sense. And you can't occupy your table for too long as there are other people waiting. The same rule works in parks and public spaces. Yes, it is considered bad manners to sit in one place slowly enjoying your meal or life in general. There is a cap chance others want your spot on a busy day. I mean, th so this is like anywhere. Like, you're not going to stay somewhere forever not doing anything for the sake of other people not being able to use it. But it's not it's not like a bunch of hate coming your way for sitting down and enjoying your life. That's, that's uh, cap. Definitely see a lot of people that's sitting down and chilling all the time. More than that, there are some public open spaces where eating and drinking is forbidden altogether. Eating while walking is also not a thing. Because So they don't um they don't normally eat and walk. People people do, but for the most part, the majority, they do not eat and walk. Or drink and walk. They usually stop and, and have that meal. Oh, what I was going to say before with the mask, like masks have been a thing in Japan before COVID. So um, they were always courteous of people that wear masks or courteous of, you know, themselves and individuals, you know, their personal space, things of that nature. Osa, which means one thing at a time. If you still want to try to eat while walking, be prepared to carry your trash around before you find a trash can. This is a rather difficult task in Japan. A lot of tourists fail at it and just litter all over the place, which is a no for the Japanese. So, yeah, um, littering is definitely not a big thing about Japan. Japan is fairly clean. Trash cans are hard to find. If you do need to find a trash can, your best bet is to find a Lawson's, 7-Eleven, or Family Mart. Um, there, those are the convenience stores, the konbini, where you can find them. You, you can find them almost on every corner, right? There's never one that is too far away. But if, you, if you're in Japan, you come to visit, bring a little plastic bag in your book bag and, you know, save that for your trash. Throw it out when you get home. It's going to be your best bet. Understandable, right? Or vending machines. Vending machines are key because they'll have trash cans attached to the side. Can you guess how much money this product makes per month on Amazon? Take a guess and I'll let you in a secret that no one will skip. Number six, alcoholic drinks. When the Japanese drink, the social hierarchy totally breaks down and they drink really heavily. A local professor can drink with his students and they will then drag him home. 
an exemplary clerk who bows to his business partner during the day. I don't know about the first part. Get drunk at a karaoke bar and vomit on his suit. And this is normal. I don't know about the vomit part, but the rest is true. Interestingly enough, when they all sober up, they will behave just as if nothing happened. In Japan, what happens in a boozy session stays in a boozy session. Number five, money. The Japanese have a strange attitude toward money. For some reason, they are embarrassed to show it in public. Therefore, money envelopes decorated in a traditional manner are very popular here. And if you haven't got such an envelope, you'll have to wrap the money in a piece of paper before giving it to anyone. Of course, you don't need to do so at supermarkets, but you still have to consider this rule. You can't hand your money to the cashier. Only put it in the cash tray. And it's for the sake of the protection of personal space. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. You can hand your money to the cashier. However, how it's normally done is putting the money in the money tray. So if you have, like, whatever, if it's a thousand yen and a thousand five hundred yen, you put your thousand yen down and drop the, the coin on top of it. If you have a five hundred yen coin, and then when they give you your change, they will put it down and give it to you back on the tray. Or there are hand to hand exchanges. It's not, it's not freaking death. Number four, the art of sitting properly. To sit by folding one's legs underneath one's thighs is called. I can't do that. Saiza. And the Japanese sit on the floor only in this way. They feel comfortable sitting Saiza style, as if in an armchair. It's not true. That, that is the only way that they sit down. They sit down in different ways, also. But if you are not accustomed to it, your feet become numb within a couple of minutes. If you are a tourist or a senior and spread out your legs, you'll certainly get away with it and no one will say anything. But it would be unimaginably inappropriate for a Japanese person to sit this way. Number three, gifts. In Japan, the culture of giving gifts is very strong. And there are two special gift-giving seasons each year. O Chugen in summer and O Seibo in winter. In many countries, it is customary to open a gift at once. In Japan, it's a sign of greed and impatience. Besides, what if the gift giver is embarrassed about their modest gift and notices a shade of discontent coming over your face like a wind in the reeds? By the way, do you think flowers are a good gift? Click like if so. You have to be very careful if you want to give someone flowers in Japan. Lilies, lotus blossoms, camellias, and any white flowers, in general, are reserved for funerals. Potted plants will not be appreciated because of superstitions. Anything in a set of four is believed to bring bad luck. I don't know about the potted plants. Uh, the white flowers, typically, yeah. For night is considered unlucky as well. So many. So the number nine is um, not nine. I don't know about nine. Four. Um, so ichi ni san yon yon can also be she, and then she is a, uh, it means death. So that's probably why they're saying that it's uh, unlucky. So remember not to embarrass yourself. Number two, bowing. The art of bowing is so important in this country that children learn it at an early age. Imagine this. There are many different ways to bow in Japan. Standing, sitting, and female and male variants. Here are some of them. The greeting bow, a shaku, of 15 degrees is for people of equal business or social rank. The respectful bow, keire, of 30 degrees is a bow for a teacher or a boss. The deeply reverent bow, Saikare of 45 degrees should be used if you apologize or see the emperor. The begging for your life bow is probably only used nowadays if you have done something really terrible. Of course, foreigners are not expected to bow, but the Japanese will be pleased if you return a bow. Beer with a splash of seltzer. Introducing Lining Kugel Spritzen. Number one, taking leave. In Japan, a customer or business partner is almost a god and is treated with incredible respect. 
When they leave, the whole company follows them to the door or elevator and keeps bowing until the doors are closed. It's very inconvenient if this happens in a business center with several such delegations crowding at elevators at the same time. Besides, foreign customers can be embarrassed. The Japanese of the new generation believe that this is a little bit too much and often ignore this ritual. Who knows what's going to happen to the traditional Japanese etiquette in the coming centuries? Which of these etiquette rules sound like the craziest to you? Or maybe there are some you wouldn't mind following yourself. So with the bowing, uh, I mostly experience it at restaurants, uh, smaller restaurants. So when you leave, they'll walk you to the door and uh, they'll, they'll watch you go. They'll say, thank you for coming. Enjoy your night and watch you go. All right. Well, that's it. See you next time. Uh, like, share, subscribe. If you're new, go ahead and uh, drop a comment. Tell me how you like the video. Peace.